All right, welcome to chapter three. We're going to get, really get into the numbers on the periodic table and how we apply them in our world and in a lab, because um, we, we rarely don't deal with individual atoms. We deal with large, large groups of them because they're so very small. Um, and the study of those quantities is a word called stoichiometry. That's how you say that one. Um, so let's jump to it. Um, the first thing we look at here is an image of a mass spectrometer. Um, what it does, really just in concept is all you need to know, you don't really need to know how it works, um, is that it separates different isotopes by their mass. Um, it puts charges on them and then deflects them in this magnetic field here. Um, and just like if you were going around a corner um, in a bicycle, if you were lighter, you could take a really tight turn. But if you were in a semi, you'd have you're heavier. You'd have to take a really wide turn. So heavier things are going to take uh, a much more wide turn there on this mass spectrometer. And then we just have a a hit counter, which essentially just gives us a bar graph of how often these different particles hit. Um, so this might allow us to separate uh, carbon fourteen on the heavier side from carbon twelve on the lighter side, so that we can see um, different isotopes, how many neutrons they have. Um, and this is really get um, average atomic masses. Um, the, if protons and neutrons each weigh one unit, one AMU, how do we have decimals on the periodic table? Um, the reason is because these are averages. Um, so we get a little hit counter here, which I said was just a bar graph. And we can see that this element has um, about 50% of the hits are isotope 90. Um, we got a couple at 91, 92, 94, and then way over here at 96. Um, so all the carbon atoms, for instance, do not weigh 12. Some of them weigh different amounts. This one has five different isotopes. So we say, okay, what is the average atomic mass of this element? Um, what is its identity? So when we look at this, we can see that... Um, Here's 50%, 60%, 70 80%. 80% of this isotope here, of these isotopes, are at a mass of 92 or lower. So we're not going to expect, we can just look at this and get an average here. We're not going to expect the isotope mass to be bigger than 92, even though we've got um, just a little bit over here pulling it on the higher side. Um, so we just look at the periodic table, and we can rule out a bunch of elements here. Um, we simplify it, and we're probably looking at zirconium just based on where these averages lie. We get an estimate of a weighted average. Um, you will have to calculate these weighted averages, though, for average atomic masses. Uh, for example, here's an unknown, and this gives us actual percentages. Um... A sample metal M is vaporized, we get 60% of it is present as M69, and 39.9 is M71. Um, and in physical science, we would have just dealt with the masses of 69 and 71, but because of Einstein's uh, mass defect equation equals mc squared, um, M69 is really 68.93, and M... Um, 71 is really 70.92. So they're never exact whole numbers anyway. Um, so just kind of use what they give you. Uh, so how do we calculate the average here? Well, it's not just add up 69 and 71 and divide by 2, because that would give us a mass of 70. We have to do weighted averages. 60% of it is M69. So we would expect it to be heavier weight closer to that value here. Um, this is just like you would calculate your quarter grades. We're going to take the M69 isotope is 68.93 AMU. And we want 60% of that. 60.10 as a decimal. And we're going to take the other isotope, 70.92. And we want 39% of that, so 0 0.0390. And that's going to give us um, the weight of each isotope. We're getting 41 AMUs from our mass there. We're getting 28.30 AMUs there. So we're getting uh, 
69.73, which is what we'd expect. We, 70 would be in the middle, so it's 50-50. 60% of the weight is on the lower side, so we're closer to the M69 isotope. So there's our average atomic mass. We look up on the periodic table, and we see that this one is, um, I think, gallium. Okay, yeah, just confirm, gallium. Um, and that was, that was a rather easy example. There were only two isotopes. You could have one with four, five, or six isotopes or more. Oh, where'd it go? So here's a much more difficult example, indium. Now we, we know what indium is on the periodic table, so we can just look it up. It has two isotopes, indium-113 and indium-115, with their actual masses there. The average atomic mass of indium is 114.82 on the periodic table. Calculate the percentages. Much, much more tricky. Uh, so let's set this one up just like we would our other problem. Um, but we're just with a little bit of algebra here. Here we've got percentage, I'm just going to say x, it's an unknown. The percentage of indium-113, which has a mass of 112 0.9043, um, and we don't know this other percentage easy either, but it's different, y times 114.9041, but we do know the average is 114.82. So how do we solve this equation with two unknowns? Well, you need a system of equations. How are x and y related? Uh, well, they're, they're percentages, and they add up to 100. And since we have them in decimal form here, we're going to say x plus y equals 1, because that would be 100% in decimal form. Um, that's enough to solve this equation. Um, we would need to substitute either x or y in one for the other and really do some distributions. Um, from there, it's just combining like terms, keeping track of numbers, distributing, keeping track of signs, positive or negative. You could solve for x, you could solve for y, substitute whatever you want, and then keep them in. Um, but essentially, what you're going to get here um, is x. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do all of that work here for you. That's just simple algebra. But you, once you have the system, you can solve for them. x is going to be 0, 0.0. 4.205, so that's 4.205%, and then when you solve that out, y is going to be 0 0.9579, which is 95.79%. So sig figs, it's kind of silly the way it adds up, uh, but this is what you get, and x was related to isotope 113, so that's going to be indium 113, and then y was related to indium 115. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense then. If 95% of my isotope is indium 115, we should expect the average to be really close to 115, and it is 114.82. Um, so you just get a system of equations there. You can solve for percentages. Don't forget percentages and fractions and decimals. They, they can add up to 1 or 100. Um, and now we get into actually looking at the periodic table for masses in grams and Avogadro's number. How many grams does a sample containing 3.4 times 10 to the 23rd atoms weigh? Well, we're going to start out our stoichiometry here. 3, go back to black here, 0.4 times 10 to the 23rd power. Let's get that to atoms of neon. Okay. Um, we The numbers we use on the periodic table are related to moles, so we are always going to relate these to moles. Um, when we're counting individual atoms, that should give us Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is equal to one mole of neon. That's how many individual, uh, how many groups of neon atoms we have. And then we look at the periodic table and we say, all right, now that we have this grouping, every mole of neon, we know that every mole of neon 
is 20.18 grams of neon. Um, we can ballpark this too. You do need to do mental math. 3 over 6. Their magnitudes are the same, so we can do a direct comparison. 3 over 6 is about half. It's about half of a mole. That should come to our heads pretty quick. So if I have half a mole, 20 grams per mole, we should have about 10, a little bit more than 10 because it's a little bit more than one half. So this would be really uh, something you could be able to do on a multiple choice question, 11.40 grams of neon. You're not going to be able to estimate 11.4, but if you have four choices, you could estimate that it's about a half of a mole and it's a little higher than 10 grams. And that should be enough to at least eliminate some choices on a multiple choice section. Um, an elemental sample of silver has a mass of 21.46 grams. How many moles of silver are in that sample? Um, so we can start out easy here. 21.46 grams of silver. And on the periodic table, silver has a molar mass of 107.87 grams of silver. Notice I'm always writing silver. The units, the element is included in the units. It's not just moles and grams, it's moles of silver, grams of silver. That will make a big difference in the next couple of sections. Um, 21 over 100, you get about a fifth, maybe a little bit less. So a fifth in decimals is 0 0.2. 0 0.1989 moles of silver. So there's part one. How many atoms of silver are in that sample? Um, well, we can start with those moles. There's no need to start over again. Um, we count individual atoms. That word atoms is related to particles. We could also say molecules. If we had a molecule, this one is just an atom. Um, that's always going to go to Avogadro's number. So one mole of silver, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we're talking about atoms in this case. So atoms of silver. Uh, we multiply those guys out. 1.19 7, 4 sig figs still, times 10 to the 23rd units are atoms of silver, atoms AG. All right.